Afrika na kabla ya kupoteza maisha yake alikuwa ni mhadhiri hapa nchini Kenya katika chuo kikuu cha Kibabi na wali kidogo pia katika chuo kikuu cha Riyada. Kwa hivyo tunamkumbuka na kumwenzi Profesa Ken Walibora katika tanzia hii ambayo tunaitangaza hii leo. Kwa hivyo swali ambalo unaweza kusema nasi kupitia ni je unamkumbuka vipi mtangazaji na mwandishi Ken Walibora na hapa studioni ni na wageni ambao nitakuwa nikizungumza nao na tukao tukiwasiliana na wengine kupitia kwa njia ya Skype na wafanyakazi ambao wamewahi kufanya kazi naye pamoja na wanafunzi wake na ningependa tukuanza kwa kuwatambulisha wageni wangu hapa studioni uh, ningeanza na upande wa kushoto ambaye ni Stephen Musamali ambaye ni mhariri katika gazeti la Taifa leo hapa National Media Group karibu Musamali Sante na sana. upande wangu wa kulia ni uh, Stephen Gitagama ambaye ni afisa mkuu mtendaji wetu hapa katika uh, National Media Group wote wakiwa wamewahi kufanya kazi uh, naye hapa Musamali naamini kwamba uh, ulikuwa katika hifadhi ya maiti katika hospitali ya Kenyatta asubuhi hii kutazama mwili na pia kudhibitisha pengine tutaanzia kwako tu tufahamishe kwa kifupi tu ilikuwaje akapoteza maisha na asante sana. Juhudi za kumtafuta ndugu yetu Profesa Ken Walibora uh, kwangu mimi binafsi zilianza siku ya, ya Jumatatu asubuhi. E, Ken Walibora ni mmoja wa wachangiaji katika gazeti la Taifa leo. E, tuna ile jarida ambalo linaitwa Lugha na Elimu. Katika hili jarida ana ukumbi maalum unaoitwa Kauli ya Walibora. Sasa ikawa ni kwamba Jumatatu asubuhi nikawa nahitaji kazi yake ya kuchapishwa katika gazeti la leo hii lakini ikawa siku mpata kwa simu nikamtumia arafa ilipofika jioni ilikuwa haijajibiwa lakini sasa ilipofika jioni hiyo tukawa na wenzetu ambao pia walikuwa wanapiga piga simu kuulizia aliko walibora na ndipo ambapo tukaanzisha juhudi kama marafiki na wapenzi wa lugha ya Kiswahili kutaka kujua aliko e, sasa kilichofuatia ni hiki ni kwamba m, nilipigiwa simu nikaombwa niunganishe hawa na mtafuta na familia yake. Ikasadifu tu kwamba nilikuwa na mfahamu binamuye kwa jina Anthony Wangila, anaishi kule Mwezbridge, karibu na Kitale. Um, nikampigia simu. Yeye akaniwezesha uh, kupata namba ya mamaye mzazi pamoja na nduguye Patrick Wafula. Sasa mchakato ukaanzia pale. Lakini sasa wao nao pia hawakuwa na habari kuhusu alikokuwa Ken walibora kwa sababu E, kwa mujibu wa taarifa ni kwamba walikuwa wamesema naye karibu siku tano zilizokuwa zimepita na kauli yake ya mwisho ilikuwa ni kwamba anafanyia kazi nyumbani kutokana na hii marufuku ya kutotoka nje ya Nairobi. Kwa hivyo kilichofuatia nikachukua hatua ya pili ambayo ni kumpigia rafikia wa karibu ambaye ni Ezekiel Gikambi. Anayefanya kazi katika hospitali kuu ya Kenyatta. Nilipompigia simu um, Mwanzo hakufahamu dharura ya kwa nini nilikuwa naulizia Profesa Ken Walibora. Lakini baada ya mimi kumweleza kwamba inakisiwa kwamba hapatikani kwa namna yoyote ile e, nikamsihi kama inawezekana. Ndakukatiza At... tu kidogo ili pale tu wewe mtasari kidogo ndiyo, ndiyo. Yeah, ileo ni kweli umepata kutazama mwili na umepata uh, kudhibitisha na umefahamishwa kwamba alipoteza maisha leni. Um, alipoteza maisha siku ya Ijumaa kwa mujibu wa taarifa za polisi. E, karibu na kituo cha mabasi cha country bus katika ile barabara ya Landis Road alikuwa anavuka barabara hiyo kwa miguu akagongwa na matatu halafu matatu hiyo ikatoroka na alipata jeraha kubwa hakufariki papo hapo uh, polisi aliyekuwa karibu na eneo la tukio ndiye aliyepigia simu e, ambulansi ya kaunti ya Nairobi na akapelekwa katika hospitali kuu ya Kenyatta lakini katika juhudi za kujaribu kunusuru maisha yake alifariki siku hiyo hiyo. Na asante sana na najua kwamba ni jambo gumu kwamba umekuwa ukifanya kazi na umekuwa mhariri wa makala mm, yake mm, na mambo kama hayo. Na mzo baada ambazo tumeziamkia ile udhibatio baada ya wengi kuzungumza katika mtandao wa kijamii wakikisia huenda amefariki hajafariki lakini ndio hivyo udhibati tumepata kuipata. Na pia kupitia kwa Skype tunaye uh, Jamila Mohamed ambaye ni uh, mhariri katika runinga ya Citizen na pia tunaye uh, Profesa Kimani Njogo ambaye ni mhadhiri mkuu katika chuo kikuu cha Nairobi pia tukao tukisema nao lakini kabla ya hapo acha ni muingize katika mazungumzo haya uh, mkurugenzi wetu mkuu mtendaji uh, bwana Gitagama na nataka tukakukuliza umepokea vipi taarifa hizi za kifo cha wale bwana kusema kweli hili ni jambo la uzuni sana hapo awali nilipoelezewa ya kuwa tumempoteza uh, profesa Ken Walibora Waliaula habari hii nilipokea kutoka kwake mwandishi wa NTV Jane Goiri siku sadiki 
lakini nilipo tazama runinga ya NTV nikaona kweli kabisa bingwa wetu ametuacha jambo la usuni sana ningependa vile vile kutoa rambira mizango kwa familia ndugu jamaa na marafiki ambao walimfahamu ndada zake Ken Walibora na mnajua mwe kufanya kazi naye wakati ambapo alikuwa hapa kama eh, mkuu wa kitengo cha ubora wa lugha uh, ya Kiswahili hapa katika National Media Group wakati ule ukisimamia masuala ya fedha sijui unaweza kumkumbuka kama mfanye kazi wewe na gani kusema kweli Ken tumefanya naye kazi kwa muda kiasi akiwa ya msimamizi wa kitivo au kiungo cha Kiswahili hapa katika kampuni ya National Media Group miaka ya kama vile mia mbili na kumi na tatu kumi na nne na vile vile akiwa mtangazaji wa QTV Ken alikuwa anayependa kazi yake alikuwa mtu mfanyikazi ambaye alikuwa anajitolea kama inavyohitajika alikuwa akienda zaidi tunasema extra mile kuhakikisha ya kuwa Kiswahili katika kampuni hii yetu ya National Media Group kimeimarika alitusaidia katika mambo kadhaa ya kuimarisha Kiswahili hiki katika kampuni hii na mwanadivu mtazamaji wa Katwili Olebora alikuwa amesimamia uh, vitengo vya Kiswahili vyote kaikuwa ni gazeti la taifa leo QTV na vile vile uh, masuala ya lugha ya Kiswahili katika gazeti katika runinga ya NTV vile vile na pia wakati ule katika QTV uh, tulikuwa naye Jamila Mohamed na mimi tunampata kwa njia ya Skype na ni kama uh, ametoweka kidogo tuseme kwanza na Profesa Kimani Njogu uh, Profesa Kimani Njogu uh, naamini unanipata tulizungumza awali na ulikuwa na uh, unaandika makala kumhusu Profesa Ken Olebora pengine tu tueleze unamkumbuka vipi anajua mahusiana sana aswa katika uh, masuala ya kuimarisha na kuboresha lugha ya Kiswahili aswa katika masuala ya uandishi Profesa Kimani Naam Ken uh, rafiki yangu mkubwa sana sababu tulijuana zaidi ya miongo miwili iliyopita na tumejuana wakati akifanya kazi um, eh, KBC na pia hata NTV um, Nation Media Group uh, na mkumbuka si tu kama mwandishi hodari wa riwaya hadithi fupi mashairi na insha lakini kama mtu aliyependa sana lugha ya Kiswahili na kuitetea katika mawanda ya kitaifa eh, kikanda na kimataifa na m, mara ya mwisho tumezungumza na Ken Jumalopita eh, tukizungumzia nafasi ya Kiswahili barani Afrika na akiniuliza kuhusu shughuli fulani ambazo tunazifanya kueneza Kiswahili na uh, mwaka jana tulikuwa pamoja tukitetea Kiswahili Dar es Salaam na baadaye tukakutana pia uh, Kampala kuzungumzia Kiswahili uh, katika chuo kikuu cha Chambogo. Kwa hivyo Ken alikuwa mtetezi wa lugha ya Kiswahili na uh, mwana fasihi hodari sana, mwandishi hodari sana eh, kwa, kwa sababu ubunifu wake ulikuwa ni wa kipekee. Alifahamu lugha ya Kiswahili vizuri, alifahamu fasihi ya Kiswahili vizuri na alikuwa mwandishi hodari sana aliweza kutumia taswira na kuweza kutumia mbinu mbalimbali za kifasihi za kifani e, kueleza hadithi yake Profesa, nakumbuka Profesa Kimani Njogu ni ruhusu nikukatize kidogo aliniambia kwamba ubunifu wake aliupata kutoka kwa bibi yake na pia mamake katika e, utotoni kwa hivyo tuempoteza e, mwandishi hodari wa riwaya wa tamthilia nakumbuka ameandika tamthilia mtu e, mbaya wetu kuonyesha kwamba uh, kuna udhaifu katika kutetea wabaya wetu na nafikiri um, hadithi ambazo ameziandika hivi majuzi uh, katika kitabu cha Tumbo lisiloshiba ni hadithi nzuri sana na kwa hakika uh, tumpoteza mwana fasihi hodari na masandi sana profesa na vile vile ujumbe wetu wa kukutakia wewe faraja maana yake umetangamana naye umeshirikiana naye na umezungumzia ubunifu wake na masuala mengine mengi tunashukuru sana kwa muda wako utakupisha uendelee na shughuli zako vile vile tuko tunasema naye Jamila Mohamed ambaye ni msimamizi wa uhariri katika Citizen TV wakati ule alikuwa hapa uh, kama msimamizi wa QTV na wa Kenya Libora alikuwa moja wale ambao alikuwa akishirikiana nao uh, Jamila najua umezipokea taarifa hizi kwa uzuni pengine utueleze tu kwa kifupi na mkumbuka vipi uh, profesa Ken Libora akiwa mwandishi hapa National Media Group Naam, na sauti yake na, na matatizo kidogo. Tarejea tu hapa studioni. Uh, Gitagama nilikuwa naulizia kuhusiana na utendakazi wake uh, Profesa Walibora. Na wewe ulimuona akizungumza. Ulikuwa unamuona akitangaza hapa katika uh, hmm. runinga yetu. Awali alikuwa kule KBC, awali kidogo alikuwa Nation TV. Ukimtazama unaona kwamba alikuwa ni kama mtangazaji wa aina gani? Ukiangazia kazi zake za utangazaji. Bwana 
Profesa Ken Walibora alikuwa mtangazaji shupavu sana. Kiswahili chake kilikuwa cha kiwango cha juu. Uh, kilikuwa Kiswahili ambacho ni cha kipekee kwa vile katika watangazaji tuliokuwa nao wakati huo hakuna mtangazaji ambaye alikuwa na haswa sauti yake ilikuwa sauti tofauti na vile vile ile depth ya Kiswahili chake ilikuwa cha hali ya juu. Uh, uh, tukitazama vile vile alikuwa apendi mtu akichafua lugha kila mara tulipokutana na yeye nikimuelezea Kiswahili cha hapo na pale Kiswahili cha mtaa alikuwa akinieleza naomba tafadhali nikurekebishe na alikuwa akinirekebisha ninapokosea kwa hivyo Kiswahili chake na umahiri wake katika uandishi vile vile alipokuwa akiandika taifa leo hata leo kuna makala yake katika ukurasa wa taifa leo ukurasa wa 13 ndio yeah. ukitazama yale aliyoandika ni ya hali ya juu na tutam tutam waswahili wasungu zema tutamigul misi Yeah. Tutampeza sana. Yeah. Na pengine ulihusishwa katika mazungumzo ya kabla ya kumrejesha wakati ule alikuwa kule Marekani. Sijui wapo ulihusishwa pengine ni nini ambacho kilichangia haswa nation kuhisi kwamba tuende kule Marekani tumrejeshe nyumbani aje tumpe kazi tena. Wakati huo Kiswahili kilikuwa kimedhoofika. Ile uimarika ama quality ya Kiswahili katika idara ya katika kampuni ya Nation ilikuwa hali ya duni kiasi. Kwa hivyo tulizungumzia kama Uh, wasimamizi wa kampuni na tukasema ni vema tumuite nani anajua Kiswahili nani ataweza kutusaidia kuimarisha Kiswahili katika kampuni hii na tuka, tulipo tazama tukaona Ken walibora anafaa kwa hivyo tukasema Ken tafadhali njoo hata Ken alikuwa wakati wake wa kurudi haikuwa pesa ilikuwa ile upendo alikuwa alipokuwa nao katika kudumia kampuni hii ya Nation Media Group alipokuja Uh, alifanya kazi katika taifa leo na vile vile namkumbuka kama ambaye alianzisha Swahili Hub ambacho ni website ama ni hub ya Kiswahili katika Afrika Mashariki na Kati hub ya kipekee ambaye ilianzishwa na yeye na licha ya kuwa alikuwa na kazi hiyo ngumu ya kuandika taifa leo uhariri hapa na pale vile vile aliendelea kutangaza katika QTV na matangazo yake yalikuwa vile vile hali ya juu. Aliweza kufanya mentoring, sijui mentoring inaitwa namna gani kwa Kiswahili. Lakini alifanya mentoring kwa vijana waliokuwa wanachipuka na kutaka kuhudumia idara hii ya Kiswahili katika kampuni ya Nation. Na masandi sana kwa kwa hayo alikuwa anatoa mwongozo kwa wengi sana waliopenda lugha ya Kiswahili. Nakumbuka kianzisha hiyo Kiswahili hub na Ezekiel mm. Kikambi pia mm, wakati yes. ule hapo uh, nyuma kidogo. Tumempata Jamila Muhammad na sauti yake kwa sawa. Sasa Jamila Muhammad nilikuwa nimekuuliza na ulikuwa unatoa jibu kuhusiana namna ambavyo unamkumbuka Ken Walibora maanake mlifanya kazi uh, naye hapa katika shirika hili la Nation Media Group. Hebu tueleze unavyomkumbuka. Asante sana Dan mule kama ulivyosema nilimfahamu Ken muda mrefu sana. Nakumbuka nilipojiunga na kampuni ya Nation Media Group mwaka 2002 wakati huo Ken alikuwa mkuu wa kitengo cha Kiswahili na kwangu ilikuwa mara ya kwanza kuanza kusoma taarifa za habari kwenye runinga ilikuwa vigumu sana lakini alikuwa miongoni mwa wale watu wa kwanza walionishika mkono na kunifunza jinsi ya kusoma habari kwenye runinga na namkumbuka kwa utilivu wake sauti yake ambayo ilikuwa sijawahi sikia akiwa amekatirika Ken acha ukikosea vipi alikuwa anakuelezea kwa utulivu alikuwa anakufafanulia maneno anakueleza jinsi ya kufanya kazi jinsi ya kuandika lugha ya Kiswahili hata anakukosoa anakukosoa kwa utulivu na ni jambo ambalo sikamu sitoa isahau na hata baadaye tulipokutana tena katika runinga ya QTV usisahau wakati alikuwa tayari ashakuwa mwandishi wa vitabu alikuwa anajulikana na wengi zaidi ya awali lakini alikuwa yule 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 mtu mzuri mtulivu chapa kazi na yule alikuwa tayari kuwasaidia wale ambao walikuwa wanahitaji msaidizi wake. Na hata baadaye nilipoondoka kampuni ya Nation Media alikuwa wakati mwingi namuuliza nisaidia na neno hili, tunasema vipi hili, tutafanya nini hili na alikuwa kila mara ana wakati wa kunisaidia. Kama usitomsahau na ni mtu ambaye kwa njia kubwa sana amenisaidia kwa huyu jamii ambaye mnamuona sasa. Na na pengine Jamila tukiangazia nidhamu yake manake wakati mmoja ulikuwa eh, kidedea ama kiongozi wa QTV pale wakati ule ukiangazia nidhamu yake alikuwa mfanyakazi mwenye nidhamu ya aina gani pengine ni kipi ambacho tunaweza kukumbuka kuhusu nidhamu yake kama mfanyakazi Alikuwa na nidhamu ya mchapa kazi na kumbuka alikuwa akisoma taarifa za Jumamosi na Jumapili eh, majukumu yake mengine pia alikuwa katika gazeti la Taifa leo lakini siku ya Jumamosi na Jumapili mpona muona anakuja kule kwenye chumba cha habari 
anapitia zile taarifa zote ambazo atasoma hiyo siku ana vile vile anatushauri sisi ambao tuko pale na kamwe hapo anakuonyesha kwamba mimi nimefanya kazi kwa muda mrefu zaidi yako au nakifahamu lugha zaidi yako alikuwa kama mmoja wetu tangu mwanzo na hadi baadaye tulipokuwa tunafanya kazi hata nikiwa kama ulivyosema mkubwa wake Ken alikuwa yule yule napenda kumbuka wakati mmoja tulipokuwa tunafanya jarida la jimbo tulielekea katika kaunti yake na wakati huo alikuwa akifunza katika chuo kikuu cha Wisconsin na alikuwa amekuja nyumbani na pili kizo akaja kule tulipokuwa tumeweka kituo chetu na pili studio yetu ya muda akaja tukamhoji na nikamwona ni yule yule hajabadilika alichukua muda wake kuja pale kutusalimu tukamhoji tukazungumza naye kuhusu yale ambayo alikuwa anafanya kule Marekani tofauti anazoziona huko na hapa na nikamwona ni yule yule miaka kadhaa baadaye tena katika chumba cha habari kukutana tena Ken hakubadilika. Nilimjua mwaka 2002 na yule yule ambaye nilimjua mpaka miaka hii ya baadaye. Na asante sana Jamila Mohamed, uh, msimamizi wa uhariri katika runinga ya Citizen akieleza anapomkumbuka Ken Walibora. Na amezungumzia sana msamali swala la e, kuwa mwandishi wa taifa leo kitu ambacho amekuwa akifanya hadi sasa. Mm. Na wewe kama mhariri pale taifa leo pengine unaweza kusema nini kuhusiana na lugha ya Ken Walibora? makosa makosa mengi ulikuwa nakosoa au ukipata kazi yake ndio hivyo ilikuwa ni kama ndio kamusi pia nao unajifunza. Mhm. Mm Naam, sasa ndugu Ken walibora ameanza kutuandikia taifa leo eh? katika ule ukumbi wa um, ile safi yake ya kauli ya walibora mwaka wa 2016. Tulishauriana naye pakubwa sana katika uzinduzi mwanzo kabisa wa lile jarida la lugha na elimu. Taifa leo ni gazeti ambalo siku nyingi limekuwa likishughulikia um, lugha ya Kiswahili na hasa tumekuwa tukilenga wanafunzi wa shule za msingi na upili. Na nilipoketi naye tukashauriana e, tuliafikiana naye kwa kauli moja kwamba ipo haja ya kulenga wanafunzi wa taasisi za juu zaidi ya shule za msingi na upili. Kwa hivyo tukaanzisha e, jarida hilo la lugha na elimu na ye akawa miongoni mwa wachangiaji wakuu. Ikija katika ubora wa kazi Ken walibora ni miongoni mwa waandishi bora zaidi ambao ni mwahi kupitia kazi zake. Jinsi ilivyo tu katika nyingi za kazi zake zile tungu mbalimbali ziwe ni tamthilia au riwaya pia katika makala gazetini kazi yake nzuri kabisa. Imekuwa ikinipa wakati mwepesi kabisa kuipitia, kuipiga msasa kwa sababu yeye unapomwambia kitu basi kitatokea jinsi hasa unavyokihitaji. Ni miongoni mwa waandishi watajika ambaye tutampeza bila shaka. Na na masani sana nikirejea kwa Gitagama manake ulizungumzia sifa zake ni mtu ambaye amepoteza maisha akiwa na umri wa miaka takriban miaka 55 56 hivi na ukiangazia maisha yake alikuwa mahiri sana atakiwa na umri mdogo pengine unaweza kusema ni kipi katika sifa zake pengine kilichangia e, kuwa maarufu sana jambo ambalo wote tunafahamu ni kuwa uh, ile mienendo yake yeye alikuwa mtu alinajinyekesha alikuwa hana maringo ama madaha ya aina yote licha ya kuwa amesifika na kujulikana katika Uh, enzi hii ya wakati huu jambo la pili vile vile ni kuwa alikuwa pengine malezi yake hapa awali alikuwa mtu ambaye amelelewa na wazazi ambao walifunza nidhamu iliyofaa uh, jambo lingine ni kuwa haku you know, akili yake haikuchukuliwa na mambo yaliyokuwa kitendeka karibu na yeye hivyo katika jinsi hiyo aliweza kuwa mtu mwenye nidhamu inayofaa na vile vile mtu mpole mtu mnyenyekevu wazungu husema down to earth e, ulimkuta vile vile kwa mfano akitembea alikuwa hana wasiwasi alikuwa akichanganyika na watu wa kila aina uwe umefahamu Kiswahili ama ufahamu uwe mdogo ama uwe mtu mkubwa yeye alikuwa anaweza kufanya kazi na watu wa kila aina na masani sana kwa kauli hizo na amepata kumsifia kwa sifa zake anasema kwamba hakuwa na maringo alikuwa mpole na mnyenyekevu. Pengine tusikie naye uh, Profesa Hezron Mogambi katika chuo kikuu cha Nairobi ambaye ni mhadhiri um, mkuu katika chuo kikuu cha Nairobi na pia mchanganuzi wa masuala ya kielimu. Mogambi wapo na nipate hebu tueleze tu kwa kifupi unamkumbuka vipi Profesa uh, Ken Walibora? Mgambi na mimi unanipata ningependa na ningeomba pia uzime runinga yako nimesikia sauti kidogo hapo. Na maendelea. Na nakupata na nakupata na, 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 na ndugu. Safi. E, kwanza kabisa uh, ni siku ya kusikitisha sana uh, kupata habari za 
kifo cha ndugu yetu Profesa Ken Walibora nayo uh, wengine tungesema kwamba wingu jeusi limeumbika uh, Kenya nzima na ulimwengu wa Kiswahili ulimwengu wa walimu na ulimwengu wa uandishi na mogambi endelea endelea tu kutueleza unamkumbuka vipi ya profesa Libora kwanza kabisa nafikiri uh, ifahamike kwamba nimefanya kazi na profesa Walibora kwa siku nyingi eh, siku siku chache maana kando na kujuana naye na kuwa rafiki yangu kwa muda huu wote muda mrefu uh, nimeandika vitabu pia naye uh, vitabu ambavyo vinatumika katika shule za upili nchini Kenya vimeidhinishwa na taasisi ya mitaala nchini Kenya KICD uh, vitabu ambavyo uh, kwa muda mrefu sasa vimetumika katika shule hizo ambavyo vinajulikana kama uhondo wa Kiswahili kando na hayo tumeshirikiana katika uandishi wa vitabu vingine Uh, makala na nakumbuka sana nilipokuwa Marekani maana amefundisha pia Marekani amesomea kule uh, uh, katika kiwango cha uzamifu na uzamili na alipokuwa Marekani nilipata nafasi ya kuenda kule Marekani wakati huo nikisoma niki pia uzamifu katika chuo kikuu cha uh, Southern Illinois Uh, kule Illinois kwenyewe yeye akiwa katika uh, with, uh, Madison akiwa katika uh, kule Marekani akifundisha na akiwa mwanafunzi baadaye uh, kabla ya hapo kwa hivyo nimejua nime nimemjua Ken kwa muda mrefu na nakumbuka hata wakati nilipokuwa nikifundika nikifundisha katika shule ya upili ya Lenana tumeshirikiana sana katika ku wahamasisha wanafunzi kuhusiana na Kiswahili, masuala ya uandishi, au uh, habari na masuala kama hayo. Kwa hiyo nimemkuta pengine profesa, uh, profesa uh, umezungumzia kama umezungumzia swala la uandishi. Profesa umezungumzia swala la uandishi. Pengine ni makala uh, ipi yake ambayo pengine unaikumbuka zaidi ambayo pengine mliandika pamoja au mchango ambao alitoa katika uandishi ambao unaukumbuka zaidi? Uh, Nime, kama ambavyo nimesema nimesema kwamba tumeandika pamoja msururu wa vitabu ambao unajulikana kama uhondo wa Kiswahili. Hivi ni vitabu ambavyo vimetumika na vinaendelea kutumika katika shule ya upili uh, katika somo la Kiswahili. Katika shule ya upili nchini Kenya Court. Pili uh, kuhusiana na kitabu cha siku njema ambacho ndicho kilicho mjulisha kwa wakenya na ulimwengu mzima kuhusiana na Kiswahili ni nimefundisha katika shule ya upili shule ya upili ya Lenana ambako yeye mwenyewe alipata nafasi ya kuja pale mara si moja katika kuwahamasisha wanafunzi kuhusiana na kitabu hicho ili waelewe zaidi lakini pia kuwahamasisha kuhusiana na uh, swala la Kiswahili na na, na uandishi kwa jumla kwa hiyo Ken si mtu ambaye uh, unaweza kumtia katika sehemu moja kwamba alikuwa mzuri katika uandishi tu. Ni mtu ambaye katika mchango wake na Ubin Adam uh, ni, 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 na ukuruba na kupenda watu na, na, na bidii katika kazi yake. Ni mtu ambaye anaweza si, ni, takosa maneno ya kumtajia na kumzungumzia. Na asante sana uh, Profesa uh, Ezra Nomogambi hapo ukikumbukia namna ambavyo unamkumbuka Ken Walibora. Na umemsifia sana kuhusiana na masuala yake ya lugha. Uh, Gitagamo ulisema kwamba alikuwa mkikutana na kukosoa katika matamshi wapo umekosea. Pengine kwa kifupi unaweza kusema ni kipi ambacho ni tofauti kwake? Maana ni wengi ambao upigania Kiswahili, lakini yeye alijitokeza kwa njia ya kipekee. Pengine ni nini ambacho naisi kilikuwa uh, upekee wa Walibora katika kupigania hadhi ya lugha ya Kiswahili? Jambo ambalo kwangu naona ni za cha, cha kipekee kwa Ken Walibora ni kuwa alikuwa na kipawa alikuwa na kipawa cha uandishi na vile vile kujielekeza kujieleza katika matamshi yake wakati mwingi utakuta watu ambao wana maarufu katika uandishi 
ikija katika kuzungumza ama kujieleza yani kinagobaga hawezi kujieleza kwa hivyo Ken alikuwa na vipawa hivyo viwili aliweza kuzungumza kujieleza kinagobaga ikaeleweka na vile vile akaweza kuandika na masani sana na nitakupa fursa utoe kauli yako ya mwisho kisha nitakuwa nikikuruhusu kuondoka asante sana uh, kama niliposema hapa awali ni kuwa ni jambo la uzuni sana hapa katika kampuni hii ya Nation wafanyi kazi na vile vile wote ambao walifanya kazi naye tumeuzunika kumpoteza ndugu yetu Profesa Ken Walibora Waliaula kama tulivyomfahamu na kauli yetu ni kuwa tungesema madereva mnapoendesha magari barabarani tafadhali mwe waangalifu kwa sababu hii tumempoteza bingwa kwa ajili ya ajali ajali hatufahamu ajali itokea kivipi lakini ikiwa dereva angekoma mwangalifu ni asubuhi ingekuwaje katika mji wa Nairobi ukasababisha ajali na kumgonga mtu sisi tungependa vile vile kutoa rambi rambi zetu kwa familia ndugu jamaa na marafiki na buriani mwenzetu tuache na tuseme ya kuwa mola iweke roho yake mali pema peponi asanteni na masani sana ni Stephen yeah. Gitagama afisa mkuu mtendaji wa Nation Media Group tutakuwa tukimpisha kuondoka tutakuwa tukina mapumzikoni lakini tukirejea mjadala bado unaendelea tunao wageni wengine ambao tutakuwa tukizungumza nao uh, Stephen msamali angalipo tutakuwa tukisema naye ali mtenzi hapa studioni na wengine kupitia kwa Skype kuendelea tu kutoa kumbukumbu kumbu yake uh, Professor Ken Walibora kwa hivyo usiondoke tunarejea hivi punde great things in life you must do little things every day like the one two three with Colgate do the one two three with Colgate and give yourself a future to smell about Basic protective measures as guided by the World Health Organization. Clean hands frequently with soap and clean water. Cover nose and mouth when coughing and sneezing with a tissue or flexed elbow. Avoid close contact one meter or three feet with anyone with cold or flu-like symptoms. If you have fever, cough and difficulty breathing, seek medical care early. Avoid raw or uncooked animal products. Help the world put an end to the spread of respiratory diseases by sharing this message with a friend. Message brought to you by Sour Herbal Family Bath Soup. We are no one. Our mission is to monitor extraterrestrial activity on Earth. Incident report. Access denied. There are things out there you don't need to know. That's not the lie you told me when you recruited me. I promise you the secrets of the universe, nothing more. Well, you want me to jump? Time jump. Heaviness in a burning inside. It could be hard. Burn. Indigestion and heartburn? You know, that's to wake in 6 seconds and work through the 6 symptoms of heartburn so you can keep living life non-stop. You know, fight heartburn and indigestion fast. The Three Sides of Anna I envy your luck, Marcelo. Two accidents and look at you. Do you have an angel who looks over you? No, it's the devil that protects you. If I can repair in any way the damage that I did to you, then I'm willing to help you. It's your fault that the woman that I love is dead. You want to compensate me, Marcelo? There is absolutely nothing going on between Maripan no, no, and me. No, no, but no, 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 you don't have to explain outside. absolutely anything to me. Let's go now. Come on. It is her. It's Ana Lucia. Please, Mariano, before you think about doing anything rash, you and I have to talk. The Three Sides of Anna. This 
disease is not a joke. I cannot be allowed to take trunks and food stuff to my kids. Danger point number one is still public transport. Due to the pandemic COVID-19, things changed. <laughs> Four doctors who have confirmed positive. We have same clinical officers. We need to have full protective gear. The Kenyan textile industry proven that it can produce personal protective gear that doctors uh, require. I'm going to live at the mercy of God. Na mkaribu tena mtazamaji tunaendelea kumwangazia Ken Walibora na maisha yake ikiwa ni baada ya kupokea taarifa za kifo chake leo ikiwa ni baada ya kugongwa na gari siku ya Ijumaa na kupoteza maisha uh, siku hiyo lakini tumekuwa tukifuatilia taarifa na familia yake imekuwa ikimtafuta mwanake waje kuwa akijua alipo hadi leo ilipothibitishwa na mwili wake kupatikana katika hifadhi ya maiti katika hospitali ya Kenyatta na tukao tumekuuliza unamkumbuka vipi mtangazaji na mwandishi Ken Walibora tangazia mmoja tu hapa Jackson Kekee ambaye anasema mwandishi wake ulikuwa wa kumtoa nyoka pangoni ubunifu wake ulikuwa kipekee hasa riwaya ya siku njema nasema Mola uh, mlaze pema peponi na tutaendelea kuzungumza na wageni wetu hapa studioni ambao tuko nao uh, tupate kusikia na mtazamo gani kuhusiana na yale ambayo amepata kujiri awali tulikuwa na mgeni mmoja ambaye ameondoka studioni kwa sasa tunaye uh, Ali Mtenzi ambaye pia ni mwalimu na vile vile ni mwanahabari na ningependa pengine kumkaribisha katika studio zetu na pia tukaanza kwa kusema naye uh, siju unamkumbuka una, una vipi na nitakupa fursa ya kusema hivyo lakini kabla ya hayo kupitia kwa njia ya Skype kwanza tuseme naye mwalimu Yunis Wakofula ambaye uh, ni mwalimu katika shule ya opili ya State House uh, Girls na Yunis na mimi unanipata hebu tueleze kama mwalimu maana yake bora alikuwa anajiita mtoto wa mwalimu alikuwa ni mwalimu kabla kuingilia masuala ya uandishi na pia kaendelea kuwa mwalimu unamkumbuka vipi uh, profesa Ken Walibora Oh asante sana bwana Daniel uh, nimesikitika kwamba nimempoteza rafiki jirani kutoka upande wa Kitale na vile vile mwalimu katika fasihi mimi namkumbuka kwa sababu mara nyingi tumemwalika katika shule ya upili ya State House kuwapatia wanafunzi motisha ya kusoma na kukuenzi lugha ya Kiswahili. Nimesikitika sana na ningependa kutuma rambi rambi zangu kwa jamaa na marafiki wa Ken Walibora. Na umesema kwamba kama mwalimu pengine ukiangazia kazi zake maana yake naamini umefunza baadhi ya riwaya uh, na kazi ambazo amepata kuandika. Unaweza kuangazia uandishi wake kwa namna gani? Kusema ukweli hilo ni swali ambalo ni nzuri mno Ken walibora vitabu vyake vilikuwa vitabu vizuri sana tukiangazia kitabu kama siku njema ambacho mimi binafsi nilikipenda na nikawafunza wanafunzi wangu vizuri sana e, a, mwalimu huyu alizingatia mambo mengi sana kwanza kabisa mbinu za lugha alizozitumia katika kitabu hicho zilikuwa za kufurahisha sana haungeweza kusoma kitabu chake bila kutambua mbinu mbalimbali za lugha ambazo amezitumia pia maudhui yake yalikuwa yanajitokeza wazi sana mtiririko wa vitabu vyake pamoja na wahusika aliowatumia katika vitabu vyake walikuwa ni wahusika ambao utawafuatilia kwa uzuri na mara nyingi tulikuwa tunasema lazima anaandika tawasifu yake mwenyewe au wasifu wake mwenyewe kwa sababu mara nyingi sehemu ambazo alikuwa anazitaja dan ninazijua shule ya upili ambayo alisomea St Joseph naijua mimi mwenyewe e, mahali alikoishi na kadhalika kwa hivyo ni mambo mengi ambayo alikuwa anashughulikia na sisi kama walimu wa lugha ya Kiswahili tumempoteza mwalimu wa kutajika na pengine kwa kumalizia Yunis ni kitabu kipi ambacho unaweza kusema kwamba ndicho mahiri ndicho kizuri zaidi alichoandika na shikilia tu hapo usijibu kwanza kuna maoni hapa mawili matatu kuna antidote ambayo anasema alikuwa kiongozi kio cha jamii na pia kutuonyesha uongozi ulivyooza katika jamii katika fasihi uh, Mola Lazaro yake pema peponi kisha kuna Halima Shabana anasema namkumbuka kwenye riwaya ya siku njema alivyosimulia kuhusu kongoe ya Mswahili alivyokuja Kitale hapa nchini Kenya kumtafuta babake mzazi Juma Mkosi ambaye alimfahamisha kwa jina la Isokum Amu jamaa Amu Jisokum 
nilikuwa ni uh, kutumia kuandika majina kutoka nyuma na hiyo picha uh, huwa machoni mwangu kisha nimalizie na huyu Ben Kisembe ambaye anasema namkumbuka guru Profesa Libora kwa kukuza umoja na uwiano humu nchini na hata katika dola za ugaibuni Mungu ilaze uh, pema peponi E, roho yake na pia na rebo barasa Bristol ambaye anasema siku njema kidaga au okay, keno libora uh, nani atakuwa kama wewe anamtakia anasema roho yake ilazwe pema peponi turejee kwake Yunis tukiangazia vitabu vinga alivyoviandika na walivyovitaja hawa kidaga kimmozia na vingine vyote pengine Yunis katika kazi yake ya kufunza ni kitabu kipi ambacho naisi kwamba kilikuwa cha kipekee zaidi cha keno libora kitabu ambacho ninaona kilikuwa ni cha kipekee ilikuwa ni siku njema kwa sababu kitabu hiki kinazungumzia kuhusu eh, E, mambo ambayo yanatendeka katika tuseme maisha yetu kwa sababu tunajua kwamba mwandishi anapoandika kazi yake lazima kuna mawazo yaliyomsukuma kuandika kitabu hicho sasa siku njema ni kitabu ambacho Ken ameandika na kikawa kimefurahisha wanafunzi wengi sana kwa sababu wa ule mtiririko wa kipekee ambao alimtumia na kwamba maudhui yaliyojitokeza katika kitabu hicho yalikuwa ni maudhui ambayo mwanafunzi anaweza akayafananisha na maisha ya kawaida na hivyo basi ikawa wanafunzi wakakipenda mno Na masani sana a Yunis wa kwa wakati wako Yuni mwalimu katika shule ya upili ya State House Girls akiangazia maisha yake Keno Libora alikuwa na mwandishi ambaye alibakisha ama athari yake ilibaki kwa msomaji maana alimtezi na kumbuka mmoja wapo niliokuwa nao waliposoma kitabu kile cha uh, siku njema alisema kwamba nami pia nitabadilisha jina langu ule utaratibu kuanzia majina kutoka nyuma au jiso kum juma mkosi alikuwa anaitwa David Mosela akaanza kujiita Divad Alisu na ile ndio jina lake hadi leo pengine nawe ni kipi ambacho uh, unakumbuka zaidi kumhusu profesa na mlitangamana kwa njia gani Kwa hakika kabla ya kusema lolote kwanza ningependa kutoa pole zangu uh, kwa familia, ndugu, jamaa na marafiki wa Keno Libora na nawaombea Mungu awapatie subra wakati huu wa msiba. Mimi namkumbuka Ken uh, kama mwalimu, kama ndugu, mfanyikazi mwenzangu na zaidi ya yote namkumbuka kama mwanahabari na mhariri jambo ambalo nafikiri watu wengi hawatambui pengine alikuwa ni mwanahabari vile vile na mhariri. Uh, nakumbuka mwaka elfu mbili mwanzo wa karne hii. <laughs> Tulikuwa na Ken Walibora hapa katika jumba hili la la Nation Center uh, na tulikuwa tukifanya kazi pamoja. Tulikuwa tunaanzisha kitengo cha Nation TV ambacho hivi sasa ndio kinaitwa NTV hapa tulipo sasa hapa tulivyo sasa yeah, mbali wakati ule <laughs> <laughs> wakati ule kilikuwa chini ya uh, Africa Broadcasting Division ya Nation Media Group na tulifanya kazi na kuanzia mwaka huo tukiwa mimi pamoja na Swale Mdoe pamoja na Lolani Kalu watu watatu ndio tulikuwa tukishikilia kitengo hichi cha Kiswahili tulikuja kukianzisha hapa kitengo cha Kiswahili kulikuwa ni habari za Kiingereza wakati huo wote lakini tulikuwa tulianzisha ya pamoja na Ken Walibora ndio akiwa mhariri mkuu wetu wakati huo. Kwa hivyo nikisema namkumbuka kama mwalimu ni kwamba alitufunza sana wakati huo kama mhariri mkuu ndiye alianza kutufunza kazi hii ya wanahabari e, hasa kwa upande wa lugha kulikuwa na Nation e, FM pia ambayo ndio tulikuwa inaanza pia ya kitengo cha Kiswahili. Tulikuwa tukisoma habari Nation FM na pia tulikuwa tukifanya TV at the same time. Kwa hivyo kwa hakika namkumbuka akitupa mwongozo na mwelekeo mzuri wakati huo. Na pia Ken Walibora ni mwandishi kama mimi. E, na ameandika vitabu vingi. E, mimi nimejaribu kidogo upande wangu na jambo ambalo siwezi kulisahau ni wakati ambapo vitabu vyetu vyote viliteuliwa kuingia katika mashindano ya Jomo Kenyatta uh, mashindano ya Jomo Kenyatta Awards ya mwaka juzi kama sikosei tulikuwa pamoja kitabu chake e, nasikia sauti ya mama na kitabu changu ni rangi tu ambapo nilikuwa nimezungumzia masala ya a, ndugu zetu albino na jinsi ya kuwa, kuwatetea katika masala ambayo wanadhulumiwa na kwa bahati mbaya ama nzuri e, kitabu cha Ken Walibora kikatokea kwa namba moja kitabu changu kikawa namba mbili ni rangi tu. Kwa hivyo hicho cha nimesikia sauti ya mama. Eh, nasikia, nasikia sauti ya mama ndio. Mbacho ni kama wasifu nimekusoma ni kama maisha yake eh, alikuwa na no. eh, kili, kili, kilichukua tuzo hilo la Jomo Kenyatta mwaka juzi na kitabu changu kikawa cha pili. Kwa hivyo nikamwambia mimi nikafurahia nikamwambia bwana Ken nafurahia kwa sababu alianishinda ni mwalimu wangu. 
kama ningekuwa ni mwanafunzi pengine ningeona aibu lakini e, ndio kauli yangu ya mwisho kuzungumza na yeye tangu wakati huo nafikiri e, hatujazungumza tena Uh, vile vile eh, Ken walibora na mkumbuka kama mwalimu eh, manake mwalimu si lazima yule akufunzaye darasani mwalimu akiandika vitabu ukisoma wewe amekufunza jambo fulani hapa katika kitengo cha Kiswahili ametufunza uh, jambo fulani paka tukaweza kuenua Nation TV paka ikakuwa inaonekana kila mahali alafu kisha baadaye ndio tukaondoka tukaenda ma, maeneo mengine kwa hivyo hivyo ndivyo ninavyomkumbuka Ken walibora na vile vile vitabu vyake vingi eh, watu wengi wameshazungumza kwamba Uh, vimetufaidisha kwa njia moja ama nyingine na, na, na pengine yeah. kikudisha nyuma kidogo maana yeye ni mwandishi na si hapa pia kina msamali pia tuko mm. wengi ambao tunajivisha joho la kuwa watu ambao wanapigania uh, hadhi ya lugha ya Kiswahili lakini yeah, kipi kilimfanya yeye kuwa pekee katika vitabu vyake kupigania uh, hadhi ya lugha ya Kiswahili eh erudia tena sijafahamu uh, walibora ni kipi kilimpa upekee ni kipi kilikuwa cha kipekee kwake kwamba kwa? kati ya wote ambao walikuwa wanapigania lugha ya Kiswahili na wale ambao wamekuwa wakipigania lugha ya Kiswahili And, kwa hakika Ken walibora alikuwa aki tetea lugha ya Kiswahili e, kivitendo kwanza ye mwenyewe akijitokeza katika mihadhara, akijitokeza katika majopo mbalimbali kuweza kukitetea Kiswahili, akishiriki katika mikutano na warsha mbalimbali hapa nchini na nje ya nchi kuweza kuja hata kiasi cha kuweza kufikia kubuni na kutohoza baadhi ya maneno ya Kiswahili ambayo yeye alihusika pakubwa. Alafu istoshe pia alikuwa aki, akitetea lugha ya Kiswahili kupitia uh, sanaa kama hivyo vitabu vyote alivyoandika naona alafu pia istoshe vile vile alikuwa ni mwanahabari alikuwa aki, akiweza kupaka dakika yake ya mwisho amekuwa hapa kama mwanahabari ameweza kutetea lugha ya Kiswahili eh, kupitia katika vyombo vya uh, habari na vile vile katika mitandao eh, ya kijamii na mitandao mengine ya kawaida ili kuendeleza kote nchini kuna wakati alikuwa Marekani kwa muda mrefu pia kule Oxford kama wanakumbuka huko pia alikuwa aki, akitetea Kiswahili alikuwa aki, akiongoza kile kitengo cha Kiswahili kule na vile vile kuandika vitabu e, mbali na vitabu vya riwaya alikuwa pia ameandika vitabu vingine ambavyo ni vya lugha vile vile kwa hivyo amekuwa amekitetea kwa kila hali na kama wanavyofahamu ni kwamba zamani kidogo ilikuwa si watu wengi wa kutoka katika maeneo ya bara ambao walikuwa wamejitokeza na kuonekana wazi kwamba wanatetea Kiswahili mm. e, tangu nyakati za kina uh, Matthias Uh, ni pala kule no, Tanzania no. hapa Kenya alikuwa si wengi ambao wanatoka katika maeneo ya bara wengi walikuwa wanatoka sehemu ya pwani ndio mm. wanatetea Kiswahili lakini Ken Walibora alikuwa ni miongoni mwa wale watu wa kwanza kuweza kujitokeza kukuza Kiswahili kukitetea kisa sana na kuweza kukiingiza katika uh, mwangaza wa dunia ambapo kilikuwa kinaonekana kwamba ni lugha pia katika Kenya hipo mbeleni ilikuwa ni Tanzania tu ndio inajulikana kama kwa kusifika kwa mambo ya Kiswahili mawarsha jopo hata katika kuunda jopo la kusimamia Kiswahili hapa nchini alihusika pakubwa pia katika swala hilo pia vile vile alikuwa kwa upande mwingine sanaa ya ushairi kidogo nafikiri alikuweko pia ambapo sisi pia tulikuwa upande huo kwa hivyo hayo ndio ambayo amekuwa akiyatumia uh, kuweza kuendeleza lugha Kiswahili kihali na mali na masana sana na madamu mwangazia masuala ya ushairi alikuwa anajihusisha sana na ushairi na kumbuka nikichanganua baadhi ya mashairi yake ambao yalikuwa na ubora wale mashairi ya ya yule mnyampala na pia mashairi yake Muyaka bin Haji Al-Gaisani ambaye alikuwa anatunga mashairi karne ya 18 na mbali na masuala hayo maana yake msamali umesema naye hadi kufikia dakika ya mwisho umekuwa kishughulikia kazi zake alipokuwa hapa tukafanya kazi naye nikiwa miongoni mwao alikuwa anafanya vikao vingi wadau wa lugha ya Kiswahili kuboresha lugha ya Kiswahili katika maandishi na vitu vingine kama vile ni kipi ambacho pengine unaweza kusema kwamba watu hawafahamu kumhusu maana yake umetengamana naye kama rafiki na pia kama mfanyakazi mwenzako. Jambo la pekee ambalo mimi kwangu linamtokeza Profesa Ken Walibora uh, kila ambacho tunakiita upekee wake. Ni, 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 ni ile ni damu na ule unyenyekevu licha ya kuwa na jina kubwa. Huu ni bingu ambaye na umaarufu wa kimataifa lakini kila mnapokutana na yeye siku zote e, yeye hupenda kushauriwa, hupenda kukosolewa pale panapo, panapo haja na siku zote pia anapohisi kwamba lipo jambo ambalo labda umekosea katika matumizi ya lugha ije katika iwe ni katika maandishi au mazungumzo atakukosoa kwa unyenyekevu hilo ndilo jambo ambalo mimi kwangu nahisi kwamba linamtokeza kama mtu wa kipekee alafu la, la pili pia ni kwamba wapo waandishi wengi ambao kutokana na umaarufu wao kwa namna fulani naweza kusema kwamba labda wamezinza vichwa kwa namna fulani wanapenda kujitapa na kadhalika walibora huto mpata pale siku zote mnyenyekevu atajitambulisha kama mtoto wa mwalimu hiyo sifa ya unyenyekevu ni sifa ambayo wengi hawana yes 
zaidi na, na pengine ukiangazia maana yake najua katika taifa leo kuna wakati ambapo wao mnapata uh, zile kauli za wasomaji ambao wamekuwa mm. kusoma makala yake tunasema ni feedback wamekuwa mm. kusemaje kuhusiana na uh, kazi zake na uandishi wake katika gazeti la taifa leo mwanzo uh, sisi tukiwa gazeti la pekee la Kiswahili nchini Kenya gazeti la taifa leo nafikiri kwamba tulikuwa na bahati kubwa sana kumpata mtu wa hadhi ya Ken Walibora sababu kuu ni kwamba huyu ni mtu ambaye amechangia kwa namna ya moja kwa moja katika mauzo ya gazeti la taifa leo kwa sababu watu wengi huwa wananunua gazeti la siku ya Jumatano kutaka tu kusoma kazi yake leo hii amesema nini na hata nakumbuka makala ambayo imetokea siku ya leo eh, alikuwa anapigia debe uunduaji wa baraza la Kiswahili nchini Kenya. Hai ni baadhi ya mambo ambayo alikuwa anayapigania kabisa. Kwangu mimi Ken Walibora ni mfia lugha. Asante. Ndiyo. Asante sana alikuwa anapigania lugha kabisa na kuna mengi tu ambao yanamhusu ambao huenda tutapata fursa ya kuzungumzia kikamilifu. Tutakuwa tukisema naye kwa line ya simu uh, Daniel Ndamboki wengi wanamjua kama chachi la mamuigizaji na pia mchekeshaji na vile vile mwanahabari pia ambaye ni mtangazaji. Chachi na mimi unanipata na ulikuwa mmoja wapo wa waigizaji wakati wa ile uh, riwaya ya siku njema ilipokuwa inaigizwa kwa wanafunzi shuleni. Pengine unaweza kutupa kumbukumbu yako ya Profesa Ken Walibora. Naamini unanipata. Asante <laughs> sana kwa kuweza kunipigia simu. Najua tuna muda lakini kuzunguza mambo ya profesa itahitaji uh, kuzima. <laughs> Kweli. Ah, uh, uh, na kifupi tu ah uh, ke ya siku njema ndio mchezo wa kwanza tuliweza kuigiza mwaka tisa pale National Theatre ah uh, pamoja na kikundi cha Visions Theatre wakati huo kikielekezwa na bwana George Tyson marehemu sasa hivi na ulikuwa mchezo ambao ulikuwa na hisia nyingi sana na wakati tulipoigiza pale na kumbuka ulikuwa ndio mchezo mkubwa sana ushaifanyika pale kwenye kumbi wa National Theatre na profesa mwenda zake Ken Walibora alipokuja profesa alifurahishwa sana na vile tuliigiza. Maana watu mpaka walikuwa walia e, wakati tukifanya buriani ya babake kazi kwisha na na baadhi ya sehemu kwenye 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 riwaya hiyo. Na hapo ndio nilipoanza mambo yangu ya usanii. Ni baada ya e, onyesho hilo la siku njema ndio nilipata nafasi ya kuigiza michezo nyingine tofauti na pia kufeza kufanya kazi eh, na profesa uh, Ken Walula wa Libora kwenye idara KIE wakati hiyo tukifanya uh, vipindi vya redio kusomesha uh, wanafunzi na, na pengine Churchill Churchill pengine na singependa <laughs> Churchill singependa umalize bila kuzungumzia swala la uluku na igiza uh, muhusika yupi katika kitabu hicho cha siku njema ah. na pengine ulijifunza nini kutokana na hicho Okay naam naam uh, nilikuwa muhusika mkuu kongoea mswahili Naam uh, na ilichukua muda mrefu sana kuweza kushika yale maneno na kushika ile ile karata maana maana naona umejitahidi kabisa kusema kwa Kiswahili kizuri kwa sekunde kumi hivi pengine kauli yako ya mwisho tukimalizia utasemaje e, kauli ya e, mtu mkubwa ukianguka ndege waliopo ndio umia kama alivyoandika Ken Walibora na alisema kunao wengi sana wenye talanta lakini zaoza na kuoziana kwenye mabua ya mashamba kwa kukosa watu wa kuhamasisha ndipo sasa nilipopata nafasi na asante sana Runinga NTV kulipa nafasi ya kuigiza mchezo wa Chacho Show niliweza kupatia vijana wengi na bado naendelea nafasi ya kuweza kujitokeza ni kutokana na riwaya hiyo ya siku njema iliyoandikwa na Profesa Ken Walibora ambaye sasa ni mada zake na masani sana hiyo ni Daniel Ndambuki au mwigizaji na mchekeshaji Chachi hapo akizungumzia maisha yake Ken Walibora baada ya kuigiza kama muhusika mkuu katika riwaya ya siku njema wageni wangu studioni sekunde 30 kila mmoja mtanzania naye alimtenzi tukimalizia. Na mimi nasema kwamba kama alivyosema Chachi e, mti mkuu ukigwa eh ndege utawanyika. Na kama Ken Walibora alivyokuwa anasema ni kwamba watu wengi wana vipawa lakini wamevificha ndani. Wengi wangejitokeza kama yeye vile alivyojitokeza na akawafaidisha wengine kwa sababu hakuwa mchoyo katika kipawa chake alikuwa akikigawanya kwa watu wengi kama mnavyotuona sisi pia tumefika hapa tulipofika miongoni mwao ni mchango wake umesukuma hapo kwa hivyo watu wajitokeze wenye vipawa hasa upande wa Kiswahili tusijifiche ndani ndani kila saa angalau watu wajue ilikuwa vipi Kenu alibora alikuwa e, yani paka ni mchapakazi kiasi cha kwamba kuna wakati aliziraa ikiwa studio 
Naam. Kuna wakati fulani wenzetu walikuwa wagonjwa, si tulikuwa watu wanne kwenye kitengo. Naam. Wenzetu wawili walikuwa wagonjwa, akaniambia lazima wale tini yende hewani, hakuna swala lingine. Yeye peke yake na mimi tukafanya bulletin mzima. Sasa yeye kumbe alikuwa amefanya wiki mbili mfululizo. Alikuja akisoma habari hapa akimaliza tu akazirai. Ikabidi tumpeleke hospitali sababu ya nini kufika hospitali akaambia ni kazi wewe uko wewe unafaa upumzike. Kwa hivyo tuwe na moyo kama ule na tuwape wenzetu tusiwe wachoyo wa kutoa talanta zetu na vipawa vyetu kwa hasa wale wanaokulia sasa katika lugha. Sekunde 20 msamali. E, ndugu Dan mimi naomba tu kumalizia labda kwa ku sisitiza jambo moja. Ipo kauli mbiu ambayo nafikiri kwamba wengi wa wapenzi wa lugha ya Kiswahili katika makundi mbalimbali ya lugha kwa sasa hivi wanaifahamu na inahusishwa na Ken Walibora. Anasisitiza hivi kwamba sisi sote ni wajenzi tusipiganie ufito. Yeye ni kielelezo bora na naamini kwamba ame 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 ame, ame panda, e, mbegu ambayo mwishowe itaota na mwishowe itanawiri. Kwa hivyo sisi sote e, kama ilivyokuwa ndoto yake kwamba E, pawepo na baraza la Kiswahili mikakati imeshika kasi naomba baraza la Kiswahili nchini Kenya lipatikane kwa heshima ya ndugu Ken Walibora Asante sana. Luga. Asante Stephen Msamali ambaye ni mhariri wa taifa leo uh, na vile vile Ali Mtenzi ambaye uh, ni mwanahabari na pia ni mwandishi. Mimi ni Daniel Muna nasema shukrani na nimekuwa makala magumu mwanake Professor Lebora nilimfahamu kama rafiki pia na mfanyikazi mwenzangu na nimekuwa uh, Farid kuzungumzia na ambao tungeweza kuzungumzia. Tunaondoka kwa sasa tumetamatisha uh, makala yetu maalum na taarifa zetu kwa lugha ya Kimombo zitakuwa zinakujia kuanzia mwendo wa saa saba mchana. Endelea kutazama NT. Sensitivity is a short, sharp pain that people experience when they have something hot or cold getting to the nerve of the tooth. Dentists recommend Sensodyne to their patients. It's able to get inside the tooth and calm the nerve of the tooth down. And the proof's in the results. It works. <laughs> You told me when you recruited me. I promise you the secrets of the universe, nothing more. You want me to jump? Time jump. Heaviness in a burning inside. It could be hard. Indigestion and heartburn? Eno gets to work in 6 seconds and works on the 6 symptoms of heartburn so you can keep living life non-stop. Eno, fight heartburn and indigestion fast. Tonadol Extra, imetenginezo kwanjia speciali kupamana haraka na maumivu ya kichwa, mwili na hata meno. Tonadol Extra, hakika, maumivu ya kizidi, pata ushauri wa daktari.
When you're facing stubborn stains, you're always in a fierce fight. Kingsoft kicks out stains. Kimba, take it. There's no debate. Home is best. If you must pay for deliveries, use your NCBA debit card. Stay home. Stay safe. Shared your bongo points with someone who needs them? Remember to help a friend or anyone in need to buy food using your bongo points. Stay at home, but still stay together with your loved ones and friends using bongo points. Share your story or video of how you've helped a fellow Kenyan to our FB page NTV Kenya, Twitter page at NTV Kenya, Instagram at NTV Kenya, SMS 20686 or our WhatsApp number 0745-925-002. TV. Well, it's NTV at 1. We are live from the Nation Center. My name is Ken Mijungu with a quick news update for you. And let's begin from Mombasa right now, where the Inspector General of the Police, Hilary Mutiambai, has directed police officers in the coast region to enforce wearing of masks while in public and to take action against any citizen defying that directive. Mutiambai is on a two-day tour of the coast region to inspect the ongoing operations in the fight against the spread of the coronavirus. Our reporter Kevin Mutai spoke to the police IG and the Updates us on the confinement measures in place at the coast. And Kevin now joins me live. Kevin, good to see you this afternoon. What more did you speak about with the Inspector General of the Police? Uh, yes, uh, it's good to hear from you, Ken. And we are joining the broadcast from Mtuapa, where there is a police roadblock. And we were in expecting to see the police IG arrive here any moment from now. But we are informed that he's decided to uh, start his trip uh, at the ferry to inspect how the enforcement of uh, the COVID-19 regulations are being enacted. Uh, the IG arrived uh, in Mombasa this morning and first uh, met uh, the regional police bosses before going uh, to see uh, the regional uh, commissioner and then again he met uh, Mombasa Governor Hassan Joho and he's here on a two-day uh, visit and he'll be specifically uh, going uh, through or uh, going to three counties here in the coast region that is the county of Mombasa, Kilifi and even Kuala counties. Uh, remember that these are the regions where uh, the uh, containment or rather the cessation uh, of movement had uh, been uh, affected by the head of, I mean uh, as directed by the head of state and Mutemba is here to ensure that uh, the two operations uh, as uh, directed by
by the government is uh, followed and one among I mean uh, one of those operations is to ensure that the curfew is adhered to the latter as well as to ensure uh, that other uh, guidelines with regards to uh, uh, containment is also followed and he's directed the police uh, officers to ensure that all the protocols COVID-19 protocols have been followed to the latter and of course take action against any uh, member of the public who goes against uh, these uh, guidelines but of course also Mutembai uh, reiterating that, uh, that also he uh, will be speaking to different stakeholders who uh, are in this region uh, to of course uh, highlight some of the key concerns that perhaps they think the security sector uh, should uh, enact I mean uh, should come clean and ensuring uh, that uh, they, uh, uh, they, they they keep uh, the virus at uh, bay but here can as you can see we are uh, just a few meters uh, from uh, the borderline between Mombasa and Kilifi County and here there's one roadblock and approximately an, a kilometer away there's also another roadblock uh, being manned by security agencies from Mombasa County and uh, those who are allowed to pass uh, through this particular roadblock must have uh, required documentation we've seen uh, cargo trucks moving across we've seen uh, uh, medics have uh, been allowed, I mean, given access, and of course, also we've not seen any public transportation, not even a matatu or a motorcycle or even a tuk tuk uh, passing uh, beyond uh, this uh, roadblock here. And of course, also it is uh, worth reiterating that even those people who are trekking, who are on foot, uh, seeking uh, to uh, get uh, public transportation, they have to go all the way to Shanzu uh, for them to board a matatu or uh, seek any other alternative uh, 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 I mean, uh, way to move from this particular place. But can also remember Mutuapa uh, is one of the areas that a lot of people, uh, maybe hundreds if not thousands, who work in Mombasa. But since uh, this uh, particular guideline was affected, no one has been allowed uh, to move uh, this particular area because it's in Cliffy County. And of course, that was right by the inspector general of police and of course also he touched on uh, effecting uh, the wearing of masks uh, in public and of course the IG uh, even uh, telling the police officers to take action against uh, those members of the public who are defying these orders maybe uh, just listening to what uh, the IG said uh, during his press conference with the media this morning it's compulsory to put the face masks this is a uh through the Gazette notice dated 6 of this month of April, which was issued by the Office of Attorney General, uh, directing that all people should put on the face masks. These are tracts, failure to that, these are tracts are still fine of 20,000 or imprisonment of six months or both if you fail to comply. And I've instructed I uh, can remember yesterday during uh, the Ministry of Health uh, press uh, address uh, confirmed that there are 34 cases of COVID-19 in Mombasa followed by Kilifi uh, with 10 cases and Kwale with one case. So, and again, uh, uh, the Ministry of Health saying that they'll be dispatching uh, a thousand testing kits which will be focused on uh, the Kenya Ports Authority because we received concerns. Uh, remember yesterday I did a story that over 64 people at the facility are currently in quarantine and of of course having I mean seven having tested positive for the coronavirus so we're expecting to see mass uh, testing uh, exercise for COVID-19 in this region and of course also we'll be speaking to other key, uh, stakeholders health authorities to uh, get to know what they are doing in uh, the fight against the spread of the virus back to you Ken all right, uh, Kevin Mutai, thank you very much. And he's in Mutwapa. The IG is headed there and he will be filing a story at the end of the day about his mission in the coast region. It's a two-day tour of the coast. And why would you risk a fine of 20,000 or uh, six months imprisonment or even both just because of a face mask, which is 200 shillings. So perhaps it's a, a wake up call to wear the face mask. But I'm really glad because in town everywhere you walk nowadays, about 99% of people are wearing the face mask. It's for our own good. Moving on now, more than 6 million shillings was withdrawn from Bungoma County government accounts and paid to the suppliers in cash. New documents show how the county staff paid cash to suppliers in the installation of the jerrycans, which were converted into hand cleaning points across the county. Accounts placed in various parts of Bungoma County were aimed at improving hygiene, 
But since the water started flowing, concerns of how much was spent to acquire the cans have been growing louder. The expenditure is too much. We have spent six, mil six million in, in three days and then we don't know when Corona is going to end. The County Assembly of Bungoma now says that it will be investigating the matter after new documents revealed how up to 6.9 million shillings was withdrawn from the county's bank account in a single day and handed to county staff who then paid suppliers in cash. The documents show that on March 18th, a total nine checks worth 776,223 shillings each were drawn from the county's account at the Kenya Commercial Bank. Come on, donation one. Lazima ikwe declare your donation into nani alipeana, na alipeana ngapi, na cost yake ilikuwa ngapi. Na ni kama akona evidence saidi kuhusiana na pesa ambazo na investigate ambazo ni 11.9 million. Ndiyo tunamungoja pia kwa komite ya goja atupatia yu evidence. Youth who had gathered in the town to protest the matter found themselves in trouble and some were injured. Sasa nimekuja nimeandikisha habari yangu kwa police kwamba nimepigwa. Na hii inatokana kwa mambo ambayo inahusika na mambo ya kufucha pesa ya hospitali ambao walichukua wakasema wamekopa bila kuwa na idhini ya sheria. EACC on Monday said it had started investigations into the scandal. They also say a number of suspects will be summoned in the course of the week. Leila Muhammad NTV and from Bungoma, let's take you to Homabe County where the government is raising alarm over the disposal of masks in different towns. The Water and Sanitation Department says residents have been discarding used masks in the streets. Our correspondent on the ground, Bernardo Zhuang, has the details. As the government continues to intensify the fight against the spread of COVID-19 countrywide, Homabe County residents are now dealing with a new problem in proper disposal of used masks. A spot check in the streets showed the extent of this problem. Natumianga mask after two hours. Na dispose tu penye mi na yanda na yangu na tu. Ukweli kwa mana na mi pia leo ni meona max mingi zimetupwa kwa barabara. Lakini hiyo inalingana na vile mtu yuko. Eh, lakini ingekuwa mimi naweza kutupa kuchukua mat naenda kutupa hata mstoni. Sana ukienda huko kwa ziwa. Hako wengi pale stage. Hako wengi kutembea kando ya barabara watu wanatupea tu hizi mas. If something is not done we will have a new pandemic. We will have a new virus that maybe have been hardened even more than the coronavirus. Because the, the diseases that are going to collect together will be that which may even be resistant. We have discussed this with the public health and they agree with me that unless we take care, we will be facing another pandemic after the corona, which will be a pandemic created by a wrongful disposal of the face mask that we are using. The county government is concerned that the reckless disposal of masks will end up in the lake. And when we clean that water in the lake, the, the, the chemical we use in cleaning the water does not remove the virus. It will not remove the virus. We will again be drinking the virus we have been removing from our, our mouth. So we are telling everybody, please, please do not dispose of the face mask on the roads. Watu wa waugopi juu wanaona tu ni kitu kawaida kwa kwa kukusema kweli watu wa hawajakuwa na uhakika eti hii virusi ya nini corona inaweza fanya kitu gani hadi wanaona tu ni kitu kama kawaida wajaona eti ni kitu ya maana sana ama ni kitu yenye inaweza umisa jamii yani wanachukua tu kama kitu kawaida tu kuna wale watu ambao wanafanya kazi ya county ambao kazi yao ni ku Kurogota hizo na kupeleka mahali na kuchoma. Bernard Ojuang NTV in the county of Homabe. Well, from one bad habit to another, in Muranga residents are still flouting the COVID-19 regulations. Residents there continue to gather openly and border border operators are still not adhering to the laid down rules. Our correspondent in Muranga with the details. Yep. 
As Moranga County government officials were issuing masks, children, some alone and others with their parents, were enjoying the outdoors instead of staying home. The officials and even the police had a very hard time controlling the crowds. The Moranga governor Mwangi Wairia attempts to create order were also unsuccessful. Residents of Moranga are openly flouting the social distancing rule. From the Boda Boda operators to the supermarkets and the open air market, residents here continue to live life as usual. Physical distance. Uh, people can learn from statistics from other countries like uh, Italy and uh, Spain, whereby when they are where we are right now, they had very few cases. But four weeks down the line or three weeks down the line, you can see how they are they are they are, they are, they are, they are, they are, they are having a difficulty to control this pandemic. So I would ask people, uh, let us just uh, follow the government's uh, the directions. The governor continues to call for stiffer measures against COVID-19. Lakini sasa unaona mwenye boda boda hajifungi, mteja hajifungi. Sasa kwa sababu tumepatia tumepeana hizi masks. Wewe tutakuwa tunakushika na hiyo mwingine tutakupeleka isolation. Siku 21 tunaona namna gani. Residents are asked to be keen and serious with the fight against COVID-19 and those who are complying are asked to be their brother's keeper and ensure their neighbors also adhere to the laid down regulations. Martin Mora, NTV, Moranga County. Right now to some good news. In a bid to curb the spread of COVID-19, Elgeo Marakwet County has embarked on monetary screening for all people entering and leaving that county. The screening points have been set up along the entry and exit points on major roads in Elgeo Marakwet. Residents have lauded the move and called on the neighboring counties such as Wasin Gishu and Baringo to initiate similar measures in those counties. Away from that, the motorist who killed the police constable on Sunday evening at Salgar has been arraigned before a Molo court. 60-year-old Philip Correa was released on a bond of 100,000 shillings or a cash bail of the similar amount. He was accused of reckless driving and speeding. The case will be heard on the 29th of this month. Constable Magoma Nyachwea was knocked down while he was enforcing the curfew at a Salgar roadblock. The motorist was speeding to beat the 7 p.m. curfew. Right, a story close to our hearts here. Renowned author, literary scholar, and journalist Professor Ken Walibora is dead. Walibora succumbed to injuries sustained after he was knocked down by a double M matato along the Landis Road right here in Nairobi last week on Friday. He's said to have suffered extensive injuries and was taken to Kenyatta National Hospital where he passed away. His family and friends have been searching for him since Friday when he left his home and had not been seen since then. By the time of his death, he was a contributor to a four NMG Swahili newspaper Taifa Leo. He had previously worked as a news anchor and editor for NTV and QTV as head of Swahili at the National Media Group. He has also authored a number of Swahili books, including Ndoto ya America, uh, Kidaga, Kimeo. Kimemozea, and of course the book we know and all did, that's Sikunjema. Now his body is currently lying at the Kenyatta National Hospital Mortuary. Well, may his soul rest in peace. 
Let's talk some politics now. Members of Parliament allied to Deputy President William Ruto now want to be furnished with all documentation. The Registrar of Political Parties used to gazette the new Jubilee Party Management Committee. According to the Members of Parliament, led by Party's Vice Secretary General Caleb Kositany, who this morning went to the Office of the Registrar of the Political Parties, there seems to be a cover-up in the manner in which the gazettement was done. Kositany says he had uh, written a letter to the Registrar requesting information on the gazettement and the response was that the register had written to the party requesting for documentations. Now the MPs have now threatened to move to the political party's tribunal if their concerns are not sufficiently addressed. The registrar has, however, responded to their concerns saying she had been furnished with all documents required by the Jubilee Party as per Section 20 of the Political Parties Act. Right, it's very interesting. This is a developing story that just began at the end of the week when that new management committee was gazetted and effectively the name of the deputy party leader who is also deputy president William Ruto was removed and causing this uproar and this is the reason why the members of parliament allied to the DP want those documents to verify because they say about 70% of elected members of parliament have demanded that this be revoked. A section of leaders allied to the Deputy President William Ruto have challenged President Uhuru Kenyatta to denounce remarks by former Jubilee Party Vice Chairperson David Murade. The legislators claim that Murade had the blessings of the head of state before he spoke. MPs Oscar Sudi of uh, Kapsaret and Didmas Barasa of Kimilili wondered why the president was silent despite the ongoing wrangles in that party. Any changes? Ikitaka kufanyika kwa chama. Nek lasima wakai chini. Na kama vile munafiyujua, hawa wakora walienda wakafanya changes yao. Na wakiulizwa, wanasema ni raisi uru kenyata alisema ifanyo, iyo changes ifanyika. Uru kenyata kuna mdumo yake. Nataka uru kenyata ajitokeze na aseme, ye ndi hamefanya changes. Alafu sasa situ tamuambia, pia iwese kani. Kwa sababu ya stakeholders, sisi ukituwana hapa, tunatoa shilingi elfu kumi kila mwezi. Yeah. Because we have more than 150 members of parliament, more than 30 Kenyans of goodwill, who have written to the Registrar of Political Parties, declaring that whatever Murade and his group and other characters were doing was against the law. I want the president to come open and say and denounce those characters, they are injuring his reputation as the president and the commander-in-chief of the Republic of Kenya. All right, they have a point, and on that note, let's take a short break. We'll be back with more on NTV at 1. the world famous Mofix and saw the difference. Let's see how absorbent Mofix is. Mofix, thanks to its ultra absorbent particles, can keep more liquid than the other diaper brand so you can use it comfortably all day long. All babies deserve a high quality diaper. You should also try Mofix. I help women find independence by training them in fish farm. It's tough on my back, joints and can cause headaches. Panadol Extra relieves multiple types of pain. Panadol Extra, now with new Optizop technology to fight multiple tough pains with three times more pain relieving medicine in the first 30 minutes when you need it most. Seeing them support themselves makes any pain worth it. If symptoms persist, seek medical advice. Basic protective measures as guided by the World Health Organization. Clean hands frequently with soap and clean water. Cover nose and mouth when coughing and sneezing with a tissue or flexed elbow. Avoid close contact one meter or three feet with anyone with cold or flu-like symptoms. If you have fever, cough and difficulty breathing, seek medical care early. Avoid raw or uncooked animal products. Help the world put an end to the spread of respiratory diseases by sharing this message with a friend. 
message brought to you by Sour Herbal Family Bath Soap. Right, let's take you back to the developing story happening in Jubilee House or from the members of parliament ad, um, allied to Deputy President William Ruto, who we said want to be furnished with all the documents that the Registrar of Political Parties used to gazette the new Jubilee Party Monument Committee. And according to those members of parliament led by the party's Vice Secretary General Caleb Kositany, this morning they went to the office of the Registrar of Political Parties. Now they seem to say there's a cover-up there in the manner in which the gazettement was done. Thank you very much. I think... Um it is very clear that uh, Andre Rito purported to praise a, a notice on the Kenya Gazette for the presumed change of uh, office bearers, specifically members of the National Management Committee, without b a backup of the minutes of the meeting that was supposed to have agreed on those changes. And that is what we have asked her for. And she has replied to Rafael Tuju, who says, I do not have the documents I gazetted without the requisite documents I do not have any minutes. Where are those minutes? Because one thing we know, there has been no meeting. And everybody knows in this republic, Jubilee has never met. No party organ. I'm a member of all party organs. No party organ has met since the last general election. So we want to know how they generated those minutes, why they signed, uh, they falsified documentation, why they, find false, they signed false minutes, and we want to know where those minutes are because it will help us to sort out political conmanship in our political parties. Hata wakati wengine wanakuwa accused, wana accused hizi ate tunapika siyasa ya 2022. Wanainchi, nanyi watu wa media, ni nani hiko kwa siyasa ya 2022? Sinuwano wanakuja kuiba chama, ili wafanya hile mambo wanataka nae. I think it's very sad, lakini tunauliza follow wa yetu, wa jumbe wetu wote, tuwe calm. Hii mambo tutaenda pole pole, na ukweli utakuja kujulikana. Ukiona mzee kope hako juu ya meza, amewekena wa juu ya meza. <laughs> the turtle poll analogy right there used by the members of parliament making demands from the register of the political parties. Now, police in Busia have impounded more than 34,000 liters of ethanol that was allegedly being smuggled into the country from the neighboring country of Uganda through Busia border. According to the Busia County Commissioner Joseph Kanyeri, the two trucks carrying 72 drums each with a capacity of 240 liters were intercepted at the border point during the curfew hours. The two trucks were impounded and the drivers and the assistants arrested. Ethanol is a key component in production of alcohol drinks and alcohol-based hand sanitizer. Last month, the government ordered that all impounded ethanol be used in the production of hand sanitizers that were supposed to be distributed for free to the public. Lakini hata hii kafiu, wajua wa Kenya ni kiburi wengine, siyo nafasi ya kufanya magendo. Ukijaribu fanya magendo, tutakushika. Hayari tunamarori mbili. Yare tumeshika. Yakiwa ya mebeba edhano. Mini nisema warahi mungu ni <laughs> mwenye baraka. Hame tunetea edhano. Na indio tunahitaji ya kutengeza. Easy sanitizers. Kila rori ni mebeba 72 drums. 72 drums. 240 liter per drum. Alafu imefunikwa vizuri na maize jam. Ikitoka inchi jirani. Very interesting. I hope the government has taken them to KPC for conversion into sanitizers to be distributed for free. Let's cross our borders. And Africa has reported more than 15,000 cases of COVID-19 with the death toll approaching the 1,000 mark. South Africa, which is currently under an extended lockdown, has more than 2,000 confirmed cases. The lockdown has presented more challenges, especially to the residents in Cape Town. For example, residents took to the streets to demonstrate after the government failed to deliver their food parcels. 
Residents in Cape Town's low-income township of Michel's Plain blocked roads in protest. Police were forced to fire rubber bullets in clashes during a protest. The residents were demanding for state food parcels as South Africa continues with a hard lockdown to reduce the spread of the novel coronavirus. South Africa, which has the most recorded cases on the continent, launched a public mobile mass screening and quarantine campaign just under two weeks ago. It has trebled the number of field workers dispatched to homes in villages, towns and cities across the country from 10,000 to around more than 28,000. In sub-Saharan Africa, Liberia and Zimbabwe have also imposed full lockdowns. However, most nations across the continent have stopped short of forcing all their citizens to stay indoors. In Angola, police and the military blocked access to roads and a food market in the capital, Luanda, and sent vendors and customers home to enforce a lockdown amid loud protest of residents. The nation's oil-dependent economy has been hit by low demand. The pandemic's blow to global oil prices has re-emphasized the need for Angola to win its economy off volatile fuel exports. Angola has 19 confirmed cases and two deaths. Ethiopia and the United Nations have opened a humanitarian transportation hub at Addis Ababa Airport to move supplies and aid workers across Africa to fight coronavirus. The Addis Gateway becomes the eighth global humanitarian hub to be set up to facilitate movement of aid to fight COVID-19. The continent has so far not been hit by the coronavirus as hard as other regions, but experts worry that weak health systems could quickly become overwhelmed by an influx of cases. Right, let's take you to this developing story, which is a huge concern because it's a setback in the fight against COVID-19. U.S. President Donald Trump ordered a freeze of funding for the World Health Organization for mismanaging, in quotes, the coronavirus crisis as world leaders weighed easing lockdowns that threatened to tip the global economy into a second Great Depression. Now, the death toll from the pandemic has topped 125,000, with more than 2 million people infected by the disease that has appended society and and change lives for billions confined to their homes around the globe. While leaders are agonizing over when to lift lockdown measures to jumpstart devastated economies, but still avoid a second wave of infections. And with the world battling to get on top of the pandemic, the U.S. president halted payments that amounted to between $400 and $500 million last year. China has said today it was, in quote, seriously concerned with that move, with the U.S. decision to suspend funding for the WHO and urge Washington to fulfill its obligations during the coronavirus crisis. By the way, China contributes about 35 million U.S. dollars to WHO. Of the COVID-19 pandemic, we have deep concerns whether America's generosity has been put to the best use possible. Had the WHO done its job to get medical experts into China to objectively assess the situation on the ground and to call out China's lack of transparency, the outbreak could have been contained at its source with very little death, very little death, and certainly very little death by comparison. Well, analysts say that uh, that move should have not come at this point because that money is needed to fight COVID-19. And they also say that Trump is trying to give excuses for his failure to contain the virus in the U.S. Let's come back home where six people who were allegedly killed by all Al-Shabaab militants in Kafurara, that's Wajir County, were on Monday buried. During the burial, political leaders accused security agencies in the area of failing to provide security to the residents. The six were part of a group that reportedly attacked an Al-Shabaab camp in an attempt to kick them out of that area. <laughs> The bodies of six suspected victims of a terror attack were found early Monday morning. They were buried later in the day at Korfarar town. Shababu walikuwa wamekaa hapa karibu mwaka moja katika hiyo sehemu naitwa Gagabe. It is reported that the victims were part of a group that left the town to flush out Al-Shabaab operatives after what they termed as inaction from the government. They have moved all the way and skilled and trained but with one conviction to fight Al-Shabaab. Security forces ambao walikuwa hapa karibu walikuwa wakisikia risasi Hawaja patia hawa support. 
na hiyo ni kusema ya kwamba wameshindwa na kazi According to the police four members of the outlawed Al Shabab were killed in the confrontation Hakuna mtu ambaye hakuna wakati askari wameingia huko tuko na hii ndege ya kupiga eh, kutoka juu hakuna wakati wamefanya sasa hiyo ni kusema pengine hao wanashirikiana mimi ningependa independent investigation ifanywe watume wajia kuonekana kama sisi eh, hawa vijana ambao wamefariki ndio walikuwa na makosa ama ni security hapa wajia county ndio iko na makosa hiyo hatuwezi kubali the, the, the killing of these gallant officers will not hinder us to take them where they belong and we are going to take them where they belong and they should not be deterred by, by, by those killings President of Fujiri is the focus on the visible enemy Al Shabaab is more important for now than that of the invisible global pandemic the coronavirus Nurtin El Moge NTV Fujir County and in business, the Company Bank of Kenya is uh, accelerating the payment of dividends in a bid to boost the welfare of the members of the cooperative movement in light of COVID-19. Now, the bank will issue the dividends without holding an AGM in line with Capital Markets Authority's guideline as a measure to help curb the spread of COVID-19. The group's financial results for the year ended 31st December 2019 were announced on the 20th of March this year with shareholders notified of the Board of Directors approval and recommendations of payment of first and final dividends of one shilling per share. The total dividend payout will stand at 5.9 billion shillings. Absa Bank, formerly Barclays Kenya, has restructured loans worth 8.3 billion shillings in light of the request from borrowers for more favorable terms of payment in light of the adverse effects of COVID-19. Now, this comes barely a month after the executive, the Central Bank of Kenya, and the Kenya Bankers Association entered an agreement for banks to afford borrowers relief in view of the economic downturn caused by COVID-19 pandemic. The restructured amount accounts for 4.2% of the bank's loan book, which stood at 194 billion shillings as at the close of 2019. Now, the restructuring comes alongside a raft of other measures by the central bank to reform credit reference in the country. And in sports now, Bournemouth have reversed their decision to send, send staff members on leave due to the coronavirus pandemic. The club's directors said the criticism of the decision had led to them to change their earlier decision. Bournemouth is the third Premier League club to change their mind about laying off staff during the crisis after.